So the title of this video is going to upset quite a lot of people, but it's true. The Oxford comma isn't actually necessary and it isn't inherently more clear either. Before we get into the specifics of why the Oxford comma is nothing more than a glorified style choice, let's make sure we're all in understanding on what exactly we're referring to when we say the Oxford comma. When you're writing out a list of items, you will use a comma to separate each item in the list. The Oxford or serial comma specifically refers to the comma that comes before the and at the end of the list. For example, the sentence I live with Jacob David David and Henry can be written two different ways, one with an Oxford comma and one without. Now to be clear, the use of the Oxford comma here is optional but proponents of the Oxford comma will argue that it is inherently the better choice. But now that we understand what it is we're talking about, let's look at some of the examples that people will use to argue that the Oxford comma is quote unquote necessary. The most common example of sentences that quote unquote need an Oxford comma in order to provide clarity are typically structured like this. We invited two strippers. Joseph and Stalin. Now people will argue that this sentence needs an Oxford comma because it's a little unclear exactly who we invited. Did we invite two strippers and those two strippers names are Joseph and Stalin? Or did we invite two friends of ours, Joseph, Stalin, as well as two additional strippers? Add an Oxford comma and it's abundantly clear that we invited two strippers as well as our two friends, Joseph and Stalin. But there are a few issues here. Number one, what if these strippers names are Joseph and Stalin? Well, then I would like to write it like this, but now everyone's going to assume that I forgot in Oxford comma, so now I have to use a colon. But I suppose more importantly, you don't actually need an Oxford comma to clarify this. Just reword the sentence. We invited Joseph Stalin and two strippers. No Oxford comma necessary, and it's still abundantly clear that we're talking about four people. I'd also like to add that this is how you would naturally say this sentence in order to avoid any sort of ambiguity, because it's very difficult to perfectly convey a comma in a sentence structured like this. Virtually everyone is going to assume that the strippers' names are Joseph and Stalin, regardless of how you pause or enunciate the sentence. Now you might say, wait a minute, if you leave the comma in, you don't need to reword the sentence at all. And that's true, but this brings me to my second point, which is that the Oxford comma is actually just as likely to create ambiguity as it is to remove it. Let's modify that original sentence just a little bit and instead say, we invited my mom, Mariah Carey, and a stripper. Hold on a second, am I saying that Mariah Carey is my mother? Well, she obviously isn't, so we need to clarify that. You know how we can do that? By actually removing the Oxford comma. Without the comma, it is now abundantly clear that we're talking about three people. And that's because the Oxford comma does not provide any inherent clarity. For every single poorly written and contrived sentence that you can come up with that quote unquote needs an Oxford comma, you can come up with another sentence that needs to remove the Oxford comma in order to provide clarity. But because the Oxford comma has apparently the best PR team on the planet, so many people are convinced that the Oxford comma provides some sort of inherent clarity, despite the fact that you are just as likely to come across a sentence where the Oxford comma actually makes things more ambiguous. Now one of the most common arguments in favor of the Oxford comma is that it is incredibly important in legal documents. You might have heard that there have been dozens and dozens of court cases decided by a singular Oxford comma. No there have not. There has been court case, singular, decided by an Oxford comma. I'm not joking when I say this. As far as I can tell, there's only been one legal dispute decided by an Oxford comma. Every single article I can find is referencing the exact same event. Even the Wikipedia article for the Oxford comma only lists this specific court case underneath individual disputes. The only other individual dispute being listed at all is a story about a man who criticized the omission of an Oxford comma on a British coin because he did not like it. And this singular court case does not prove that the Oxford comma is necessary. This was a court case brought by the company drivers of Oakhurst Dairy, a dairy company in Maine. The heart of the issue was the writing in Maine's overtime laws and who these overtime laws did and did not apply to. According to the law, the people who are not eligible for overtime included anybody involved in the canning, processing, preserving, freezing, drying, marketing, storing, packing for shipment or distribution of agricultural produce, meat and fish products, and perishable foods. And the confusion came in the phrase packing for shipment or distribution of. The drivers argued that this should not apply to them because they didn't pack the food. And without the comma, it seemed to imply that the only people that this applied to were people who packed for shipment or distribution, not people actually involved in distribution itself. And because of this, the courts ruled in favor of the company drivers, which ended up costing Oakhurst Dairy $5 million. But here's the thing. This is not the fault of a missing Oxford comma. This is just a poorly written sentence. 
The words shipment and distribution, while not synonyms, are incredibly similar. And so if you put them right next to each other, of course people are going to assume that they're grouped together. Put distribution literally anywhere else, and they do not have this problem. Additionally, every single item in this list, except for distribution, is a gerund. Canning, processing, preserving, freezing, drying, marketing. And so by writing distribution instead of distributing, it makes it again seem as if it is part of packing for shipment or distribution. Because every single item in this list ends with an ing. So if we change distribution to distributing and put it literally anywhere else, well then the Oxford comma is no longer necessary. And if you're arguing, well they wouldn't have to rearrange the list at all if they had an Oxford comma, that's true. But remember, it's just as likely that the Oxford comma would cause this confusion as it would clear it up. Which is why the Oxford comma is not the answer here. Because the Oxford comma is not what provides the clarity. It's the clarity of the sentence that provides the clarity. There are also a couple reasons that let us know beyond a shadow of a doubt that the Oxford comma is genuinely never necessary. The first of which being is that the Oxford comma is almost never used in any official news publication in the United States. Now yes, people will argue that this is because of printing costs, but this is still something you have never noticed or been confused about. And that's because you do not need an Oxford comma to write well. But perhaps the most convincing reason is the fact that English is one of the only languages in the world that even has an Oxford comma to begin with. In virtually all languages other than English, the Oxford comma is not only not used, using it is actually a mistake. And last I checked, virtually every single language on the planet still has writing and legal documents, and they all seem to be getting along just fine. Truthfully, I can't find any evidence that any language other than English uses the Oxford comma at all. The only reason I'm not being so definitive is because there are some languages that I'm having trouble finding concrete answers for. And the Oxford comma actually isn't a widespread thing even in English. Despite the name, it is actually only a standard within American English. So believing that the Oxford comma provides some sort of inherent clarity would be akin to saying that the United States is the only place in the world that has clear and unambiguous writing. Now I want to be clear here because I know quite a lot of people are incredibly passionate about this comma. I do not hold an anti-Oxford comma position. I don't care whether or not you use it. Personally, I'll use it myself sometimes if the vibe is right. But ultimately, that's all it is. It's just vibes. It's a style choice, but believing it's inherently better or more clear is just wrong. And I know that plenty of people who grew up in the United States, including myself, will say that it feels very strange to have a comma for every single element in the list except for the last one. But the thing is, people who grew up not using an Oxford comma will say that it feels strange and redundant to put a comma before the word and. And both of these critiques are equally valid, because ultimately, whether or not you use the Oxford comma is just a style choice. And truthfully, if you're in a position where a single comma can completely change the meaning of your sentence, you should reword the sentence anyway because a single comma is incredibly easy to miss when reading.